Russian court will announce this sentence for Nadia Savchenko on 21st and 2nd of March. It was reported by a president judge. At the court session, Ukrainian pilot was exhausted by dry hunger strike. Steels proclaimed her last word. Details about the course of this session, watching the following story. Nadia Savchenko was brought to the session escorted by five police cars. The meeting began with a speech of Ukrainian pilot. The Maidan will happen in Russia. Putin will not be able to build its power on blood of people. It is unnaturally. It is against people, against God, against all the world. Lawyers of Savchenko read her last word, which she was going to say on 3rd of March. Today, Nadia added a few more words. If you decide that the verdict will be in two weeks, or at the end of April, or in six months, you want to show your strength, then show it. Just remember that we play on my life. The stakes are high, and I will win, because I have nothing to lose. The lawyer of Ukrainian pilot Mark Fagin claims that for the moment Kremlin has the only way to accept Nadia Savchenko's contentions. If Kremlin, without the loss of faith, is not ready to free Savchenko from a charge, which would be legitimate as well as just and right, and in my opinion, honest, then apparently now they should promise Savchenko her release to serve a sentence in Ukraine. That is the only way. And not just to stop the hunger strike, but also to walk away at all from this case. The presiding judge said the verdict announcement will begin on 21st of March. Present audience at the court sang the anthem of Ukraine in support of Nadia. At this time, the pilot sister, Vera Savchenko, was removed from the meeting room almost by force. Our guest in the studio today, Paulina Brodik, activist of Human Rights Campaign, Let My People Go Ukraine by Center for Civil Liberties. Nice to meet you here. Hello. And uh, on your point of view, who or what made Nadia Savchenko to refuse from the dry hunger strike? Well, um, apparently the dry hunger strike would be, could be uh, lethal for her from the one, one point of view, from, from the other point of view. Um, most likely, uh, the uh, <clears throat> detention facilities officers would feed her for a slip, and in any way, uh, she would she would be forced to consume some something and drink something. So it doesn't really matter whether she is on a hunger strike or not. Uh, there are ways how to feed her. So somehow we cannot uh, state that uh, it was the kind of pressure on Russian court, her decision to organize the hunger strike. Well, apparently, uh, I guess she hoped that it will uh, facilitate the process and probably, exactly, uh, will put some pressure on the court. And also, it was, um, it was a way to raise a wave of support uh, all over the world. And probably that was the main idea of this hunger, dry hunger strike. Because, of course, it's, it sounds like she's going to die in, in 10 days, days maximum. And uh, that is what forced the uh, international community to support her. Well, um, as we know, it was the idea to exchange Nadia Savchenko on some Russian uh, officers who were detained in Ukraine. And uh, as we know, she refused from such uh, event or action from the side of authorities. So um, what, what Russian side will do next? Uh, they, they, just, uh, to pro they just are going to proclaim the sentence for her and uh, to keep her in prison or what? Well, actually, there are three ways of, um, of the events to evolve. First is, is the exchange, as you said. The second one is a pardon, um, amnesty for her. And the last one is the, uh, the, way, the possibility to serve her sentence in Ukraine. Mm -hmm. So it could be that they will decide to uh, exchange first and to send her to Ukraine to, to serve the sentence. So this is the most, uh, you know, like, like a successful kind of uh, resolution of the situation. Probably. And uh, on what uh, conditions Russian side is going to uh, 
Well, to it's, do it's this. up to the Russian side <laughs> and Putin probably to decide. Yeah. I'm not the one to tell. We can know exactly, yeah. And uh, this week, Nadia Savchenko got a lot of support from international community. And uh, Nadia Savchenko's decision to continue strike, hunger strike after the court session stripped up Ukrainian people. Dozens of protester sections attended by thousands of supporters of detained Ukrainian pilots were held in numerous Ukrainian cities. Ukrainians gathered mainly in the front of Russian diplomatic institutions, passing the demand for immediate release of Nadia Savchenko to the herd in Kremlin. Moreover, all concerned about the fate of Ukrainian captive united in her support throughout the world. From one man protests to massive gatherings, from personal letters to massive online petitions, from ordinary people to high officials. With the demand of Savchenko's liberation to Moscow appealed more than 20 countries. The illegal detention of a pilot and other Ukrainian captives by Russia emphasized that U.S. permanent representative to U.N. Samantha Power and EU high representative of foreign affairs Federico how the support meetings were going, watching the following story. Few dozens of people came on the protest meeting under the Russian embassy in Vilnius. The protesters held Ukrainian flags and posters, shouted slogans for Savchenko's release and sang Ukrainian anthem. We will lean on the Lithuanian government to force Russian government through diplomatic channels. We hope that Savchenko will be released. The support to Nadia was also expressed in Russia. People gathered at the Triumph Square in Moscow. The meeting ended by detention of the protesters. Activists appealed to Savchenko, published journalist Alexander Sotnik. I wish for you, Nadia, to live, survive and come back to your native home, Ukraine, and become useful for your motherland. And you are an example to follow, an example of struggle for all of us. I look at Nadia as a hero not only of Ukraine, but also of Russia, because she takes the rap for all of us. Nadia, my dear child, I wish you stayed alive. I do not want to be involved in murder. I would persuade her and brought through if I could, so she would leave. She should not bring pleasure to our authorities by her death. To release Savchenko calls the people artist of Russia, a film director Vladimir Nazarov. Twelve years ago he received an honor by Putin himself. Back then Nazarov could not even imagine that he will be asking the president not to kill a woman. You have no right to judge her. She is a war prisoner. You had no right to judge her in criminal court. And all the evidence on its case are fabricated. And all Russia, as well as the whole world, knows about it. Stop off, Vladimir Vladimirovich. Do not disgrace yourself further. Release Nadia Savchenko immediately. The indefinite strike action in support of Nadia Savchenko started Ukrainians in Portugal. Earlier they came under the Russian embassy in Lisbon and promised to do that every day. Further, Ukrainian community sent letters to the president and the foreign minister of Portugal asking to get involved into the process of Nadia Savchenko's release. And as it has been revealed, Nadia Savchenko stopped dry hunger strike and agreed to drink water. About that, she wrote in a letter to Ukrainians. Nadia told that the court listened to her requirements and will adopt the sentence in a week. By then, regarding to strong support of all concerns, she stopped the dry fast, but in willing to continue it after the verdict announcement. And on 11th of March, three side contact groups meeting will be, in, will be held in Minsk. Representative of humanitarian group on peace regulation issues in Donbass, Irina Hiroshenko, reported that Ukrainian side will touch the question of detention of Nadia Savchenko. And uh, on your point of view, can mass protest section, uh, in particular in Russia, influence the position of court because we know that Russian side stays indifferent for voice of their people and uh, in case of Nadia Savchenko whether it uh, can be efficient well I would say that um, these uh, protests all over the world would rather influence the decision of, of international politicians rather than Russian politicians and uh, Putin in particular or court um, and it means that probably um, uh, the um, well by showing such a great support from from all from from the people all over the world um, they would 
force the international community, international politicians, parliament members, and so on and so forth, to probably strengthen the sanctions. It could be one of the ways to, to facilitate the situation. I don't think it can influence the core decision itself. I see. And uh, how can you evaluate the state of other Ukrainian captives uh, in Russian Federation? Because I know that this is exactly your topic. Maybe you can give us some numbers or statistics. How many people are detained in Russia? And uh, what is the course of their uh, cases? So tell us more something about In this. total, um, according to our information, there are about uh, there are 25 persons kept um, imprisoned in Russia. And in particular, there are 12 persons kept uh, uh, in, in Crimea, on the territory of Crimea. Uh, some of them are uh, Crimean Tatars, some are not. not. And, um, and the uh, 19 of them were kept, um, captured in, on the territory of Crimea first and then transferred to Russia. So the cases are very different, and of course they, some of them are uh, similar to Nada's case, some are not, and the situation is very different. For instance, uh, we know that, well, n not all of the cases are finished yet, so for instance, there is a case of the so-called Chechen terrorist, or Chechen, um, it's the che Chechnya case, um, where Stanislav Klich and Nikolai Karpuk are um, charged, and these persons were subjected to severe tortures, and now there is a problem with their uh, health conditions, with the conditions of, of health of one of them at least. Uh, some are, for instance, there is a case of uh, Yuri Soloshenko, who is 73, and he has cancer uh, and, and heart problems, which means that his sentence, which is six years, probably is a death. But maybe they are political prisoners, or it's uh, different people. Well, we call them uh, Ukrainians who are persecuted on political grounds. Uh -huh. It's because the, the term of political prisoners, it, it's a little bit different. Some of them are, some of them acknowledged as political prisoners by, uh, for instance, Amnesty International or Russian uh, organizations, human rights organizations, some of them not. But in any case, all of them are persecuted on political grounds. And uh, what uh, human, uh, human rights activists can do for such people as, uh, for example, Oleg Sentsov, uh, who are already in Russian prison and uh, they have a <coughs> really long sentence, how their destiny could be, I don't know, resolved? Well, the range of our activities is very broad, starting from just, you know, acts of solidarity, some postcards or par parcels or uh, small actions like mob actions uh, in Ukraine uh, to, to, I don't know, some advocacy, international advocacy uh, at the international level. Communication with the uh, uh, Ukrainian authorities and international authorities as well. So there are lots of things that we could do, but unfortunately uh, um, Russia is deaf, usually deaf, to, to the requirements of the international community. So the, the only way to uh, help them, actually, I would say, is to press uh, the international community first, and then they would probably um, apply some, I don't know, sanctions that would be the, the most possible way, I think, to Besides influence. Besides sanctions, we cannot talk uh, about any kinds of restrictions. <sighs> it's, it's a very tough, it's a very difficult question, but I think it would be a, like the, most, the, the best way to, to influence them. I see. Thank you very much uh, for your point of view. And our guest in the studio was Paulina Brodik, activist for human rights and campaign Let My People Go Ukraine by Center for Civil Liberties. And we are continuing our newscast.